Hi guys, Angela here to talk a bit about your character's appearance and how to describe someone in a way that feels natural, doesn't disrupt the pace, and helps readers imagine the character as they move through the story. Now at the beginning of a novel, we have a lot to focus on, showing the protagonist in their everyday world, revealing their emotions, giving readers a sense of who they are and what's motivating them, unveiling the current problem and what's at stake, making sure the setting is well represented, on and on and on it goes. And this is why, with all these things to juggle, it can be tempting to just sort of skip over describing the character's appearance and tell ourselves that the reader will figure it out. Well, here's the thing. If a reader can't imagine what your character looks like, they might have trouble connecting with them on a personal level, especially if it's the protagonist. And this is the exact opposite of what we want to happen. So we do need to convey some of their appearance to get readers started. This physical feature database helps you brainstorm specific details about a character's appearance so readers can more easily get a feel for what they look like and who they are. Let's poke into a few entries to see how they might help you. For example, something we may want our readers to be able to picture is our character's overall build. Are they petite, athletic, stocky, or something else? Let's say they fit the stocky build. In this entry, you'll see descriptor and key elements for a stocky person, and some examples where simile and metaphor are used, so you get ideas on how figurative language can help you bring this detail to life. Both of these help you find the right words and show the character's build in a way that's active and interesting. And like all things, sometimes a certain description has been used so often it becomes cliché. This is why we list a few that you might want to avoid. Tied to cliches are stereotypes, which is just a very common way to frame something. And because we want you to think about fresh ways to describe appearance, we suggest ways to twist these stereotypes if you want to use them. Now to help you imagine this build, we have ideas on what types of people are likely to have it, and even celebrities that you can look into. Then there's some other facts about this body type that's really worth thinking about, if you want to go a little bit deeper. Now, another area of description you might want to touch on is your character's face, their eyes, their hair, something like that. Now, if we look at this last one, you can see, again, there's a wide variety of words that will help you describe the character's hair. But this is where we want to pause for a moment and think about how a detail like hair can actually show readers other things about the character, like their personality, their preferences, how they view themselves, and things like that. So how do we do that? Well... Think about how a character might wear their hair and what that can convey. For example, does the character have their hair pulled back so severely it looks like a plastic surgeon has given them a facelift? Or is their hair like a tumble of curls haloing their face like sunflower petals? Both of these descriptions plant a different image in your mind. The first maybe makes you think about a no-nonsense, proper, don't-you-dare-step-out-of-line type person. Whereas the second is someone who's more friendly and free-spirited. This leads us to how we can build on the initial details about appearance, sharing information about the character as the scene unfolds using motion. What are they doing in the scene and why? And emotion, what are they feeling and how can we show it physically? For example, a character might flip their hair when they're trying to draw attention to themselves. Or we might choose to describe it blowing around their face if we want to suggest things are out of control or we want to make the character feel self-conscious in a scene. It can also drag or bounce to match a character's energy level. Hair can also be played with, pulled, shoved aside, used to hide the character's emotions. It can be touched to soothe and stroked to show affection. There's so much that can be done with hair, so when you want to convey emotion, think about what the character might be doing. Are they signaling nervousness by constantly touching their hair? Are they grabbing a clump and pulling as a way to try to rein in rising frustration? Or maybe your character has tilted their head forward, letting their hair fall across their face so no one can see that they're tearing up. Use the right way. These type of appearance details can indicate what a character does for a living, their status among others, and even hint at backstory trauma like an ugly scar on the forearm or a birthmark so distinctive the reader knows this character suffered a lot of jokes about it growing up. How your character walks, their body posture, whether they make eye contact or not, how they're dressed, all of these things can show readers so much about who someone is. So look for opportunities to make description work with the action in the scene, reinforcing who this person is to readers. Ultimately, it's up to you how much to share about a character's appearance. But here's one piece of advice. 
If there's something visibly unique about your character, don't wait too long to reveal it. Nothing will pull readers out of the story faster than discovering their mental image of a character is wrong, like discovering that someone has pink hair 10 pages in, or finding out their leg is in a cast in chapter two. If you'd like more help on how to describe your character's appearance, just check out this tutorial and happy writing.